You are listening to PT on Ice, the older adult, a collaboration between the Senior Rehab Project and the Institute of Clinical Excellence. This is a rebroadcast of an original episode that can be found at ptonice.com. All right, we're live. Good morning, folks. My name is Dustin Jones. I'm one of two faculty members in the older adult division of the Institute of Clinical Excellence. Me and Christina Previtt are teaching modern management of the older adult. We had week three wrap up last night with the first cohort, and it was awesome. Amazing discussions. Uh, That course is going uh, super well. The next cohort is going to be starting March 26th. So if you want to get in on that class, uh, I do so uh, sooner rather than later. Um, But before we get into today's topic, I'm going to raise a glass to all those new, fresh uh, physical therapists that just passed their MPT E exam. I think uh, Allie Hartman, Jordan Berry, uh, they posted a picture. So congrats to y'all. You're the smartest you'll ever be. I'm kidding. That's not the truth. So today we're going to be talking about fear. Uh, Fear is an issue with all of our patients, regardless of your setting, regardless of who you're working with. But I want to talk in particular about fear in older adults. So you're going to see two common fears. Uh, One is the fear of death um, is a pretty common fear that we're going to see. The second is the fear of falling. Now, why does that even matter? Is it even important if they're afraid? What does that have to do with us, uh, with our work with these patients? Uh, But it has a lot to do with it. Fear impacts many things about their life, um, but definitely impacts uh, their performance. So I'm going to talk about a few ways that that happens. Uh, The first one being, I'm going to pull up this uh, paper, is a stiffening behavior. So we're going to see uh, some type of agonist, antagonist, co-contraction. It's going to limit range of motion uh, in in these patients. And what they're trying to do is to create uh, stability. They're trying to create a solid surface to be able to uh, perform simple tasks. This stiffening behavior can be helpful in very simple tasks with low cognitive demand. Um, But as we know, there's very few tasks that we need to do as human beings, as independent human beings, where it's simple and where it's a low cognitive demand. Um, The stiffening behavior is not helpful whatsoever uh, when it's a a more functional activity, a higher cognitive demand, and that's where a lot of people can get in trouble. But in the presence of fear, the stiffening behavior is a pretty common thing that we'll see in older adults. Uh, Second is you're going to see... a change in their visual behavior whenever they're, um, you know, out about in the community or even in their home. Good morning, Cruz. How are we doing? Um, I'm going to put a link to all the things I'm going to mention in the description of this post. If you're listening on the podcast, I highly encourage you to check out the Facebook post uh, that's associated with this video. Um, But there is a paper titled The Fear of Falling uh, Leads to the Increased Risk of Falling. And there's this really cool chart if you can see it there. And all that basically is showing is that on one side, uh, you have the low fear, low fall risk individuals. And on the other side, you have the high fear, high fall risk individuals. And all this is, is this is an eight meter uh, path that these people are walking up to. And there's several obstacles uh, leading up to that. And this graph shows the difference in the visual behavior of the high fear and the low fear individuals. People that have low fear, low fall risk, they have more points of eye fixation as they're walking uh, basically along this obstacle course. Avery, good morning. Um, so they're, they're able to scan their environment, they're taking in more information, um, and they're, doing, they're spending less time on those points of fixation. And that's very, very important. So these people are gathering in lots of external information, And they're able to plan their motor output based on that. Now, in the presence of fear, in high fear, high fall risk, you see fewer points of eye fixation. And you see them spending more time on those points of fixation. So as they're going up to this eight-meter obstacle course, they're not able to really check and see what that second and third obstacle is. They're so focused on that initial obstacle, and it's taking them longer to plan how they're going to maneuver that object or maneuver past that obstacle. And now just think about what that would entail if someone's going out and about when they're getting out of their car, when they're walking in, you know, to the grocery store and they may have to step up on a curb. Just think of how uh, that visual behavior could impact their performance. They're not taking in as much information. They're demonstrating probably some type of stiffening behavior. 
Uh, you know, they're not thinking ahead in terms of their motor planning, and that can just lead to increased fall risk and compound their fear. And ultimately, what we see with a lot of these individuals is they don't even try to get out anymore in the presence of these behaviors. Their activities plummet, their independence drops, and it's a snowball effect um, that can stem a lot just from, from fear and, and other age-related activities, but fear is a big driver in a lot of these patients. Now, I don't want to leave you in the, the dark, uh, deep pit of despair to think, well, what can we do? There's nothing we can do about their fear, but there is. There's a beautiful thing called graded exposure. I'm sure plenty of you all have heard about it. Um, usually we hear about it with, in the pain, the chronic pain world, um, but I want to really talk about it uh, when pain isn't even present because that can be common with a lot of older adults. And so when we talk about graded exposure, uh, the first or when we talk about fear, the first thing that we need to do is actually identify it. So how can you identify fear? You can ask them. You can ask them a simple question. Are you afraid of falling? Uh, you can give them something like the study, uh, which is the Stopping Elderly Accidents, Deaths, and Injuries. This is a really cool packet that the CDC put out, um, and I'll put a link to that in the description, uh, where it asks them some of these questions. Are you afraid of falling? Do you worry when you walk? Do you feel like you need to use an assistive device? Those types of things. That's going to cue you to, hey, we got a problem. They're afraid this could be limiting their activity uh, and their performance. Like, let, let's look a little deeper. You can also do the falls efficacy scale, which is a really, uh, really neat scale where it has these different activities and, and they basically scale, uh, you know, the amount of difficulty or fear that they have with them. So you identify that they have fear. Now we need to establish some type of uh, fear or avoidance hierarchy. So you can do that with the falls efficacy scale. You can have them rate, you know, maybe on a scale of zero to 10. How afraid are you to perform this specific task of getting, you know, on your on your knees to clean the floor, for example? Um, you could do an avoidance ladder. I'll put a link to that in the description as well, uh, where they just list things that they are fearful of or they, they try and avoid due to fear. And then you can rate those on a scale of zero to 10. And this is going to be uh, really helpful to establish that baseline and you can operate from that you know, data, which we need good data whenever you're performing great exposure. Uh, another one is FODA, P-H-O-D-A. So that's um, the photographs of daily activities. Um, so it's, it's just photographs of daily activities, and then they scale the amount of fear uh, based on that. So there's some different measures that we can use. Just use something. Just get some type of uh, data, and then you can establish that baseline and progress from there. So we, we identified fear, we established the avoidance hierarchy. Now you need to establish their willingness to perform these activities. If someone is afraid of falling, don't assume that you can just go ahead and work on ground mobility. That person will likely hate you <laughs> and will not come back. We need to establish their willingness. So this is a conversation with the patient saying, hey, Doris, I know you're afraid of falling. Do you want to work on maybe getting to the ground and back up? No, Doris probably says like, OK, well, we can adjust that. What if we go over to this treatment table and what if we just work on getting on your hands and knees and maybe getting on your belly and then coming back up on your hands and knees, just working on some of that mobility that we often do on the ground? Would you want to start there? Yeah, let's try that because that's less threatening. They're more willing and that can be uh, the doorway into you um, really um, using great exposure to progress them. And so as you establish willingness we want to start kind of on that edge of comfort and fear. You don't want to be too far on the comfortable side. You don't want to be too far on the fearful side. We want to be right at the edge. And that's where the, a good conversation with your patients is going to give you good information on where to start. And then as you start there, you want to assess and adjust. So this is where, you know, you establish that baseline. You can go back to, to some of those scales that we mentioned, but you can ask them on a scale of zero to 10, 10, 10 being the most afraid you've ever been, zero being, you know, this is a cakewalk. How afraid were you when you performed, uh, you know, getting on your hands and knees and down to your belly, Doris? What was it? And she says, you know, a six, when before it may have been, you know, a seven. So she improved. So if they had less fear with that activity, then we bump it up a little bit. We increase, um, you know, some would say by 10 percent, uh, but you just progress. That's the big thing. You just want to be progressive. If she was fearful, then we kind of try and stay right where we were, do it a few more times, encourage her, maybe show different strategies to perform that movement. Um, and then as the fear goes down, then we bump up the intensity. 
And this takes time. But over time, you can take someone that is absolutely scared to death of falling, scared to death of the floor. You can take them to the point where they can get on the ground and get back up. And that's going to have a big impact on their performance, on their perception of themselves, on their resilience. And oftentimes will impact their overall activity levels and how they get around their home and, and often their community. So this can be big stuff. So great exposure. It's great for people with chronic pain. If pain isn't present, especially in the older adult, this is a very, very valuable tool that we can use to, to really um, implement and break down some of these functional activities uh, to build up their resilience, build up their performance, and ultimately build up their independence. So that's all I got for today. I'll put all those links in the description. Be sure to check them out. They're really helpful. Um, lots of stuff going on around ICE. There's lots of live courses coming. There's one coming to Kentucky. Uh, Avery's watching. Avery's going to be there and several other people. Uh, that's going to be a, in, in Winchester the weekend of CSM. Uh, I'm going to be at CSM. I, you know, it'd be nice to go to this course. Um, but Christina Previtt and I are going to be presenting. Um, but whether you're at CSM or whether you're coming to Winchester, Kentucky, uh, check us out. Uh, PTOnice.com is where you can find all that information. I'll put all that stuff in the description. You all have a lovely Wednesday. It's good chatting. Hit me. Thank you for listening. And if you enjoyed this episode, go to ptonice.com, click on the courses tab, and check out Modern Management of the Older Adult. This is a course that myself and Christina Previtt are going to be teaching. It's eight weeks, an online format, interactive, and solely focused on helping students change how they practice and how they work with older adults. For more information, just go to ptonice.com. Thanks.